Hey, what is up guys? Guardian here. Coming to you guys with a deck profile update of my Blaster Exceed deck for Royal Paladins. So, the last profile I gave you of this was uh, about two or three months ago when the Legend deck came out. Um, I, I also think uh, Fighters Collection 4 came out then as well. So, uh, yeah, because I had Mascal and the uh, G-Guardians. Uh, but yeah, the deck's been updated from uh, GBT11 and I am so, so happy with this build. It's ridiculously fun. Um, but yeah, without further ado, we'll get stuck right into the list. Um, I'll only really talk about the new cards as well, because um, a lot of the explanations I gave of the cards in the last video. So, And I'll put a, an eye icon up here in case you haven't seen that profile. But yeah, check it out if you want more of an explanation of the cards. Um, but obviously I'll go through the reasons to why I've changed the ratios and stuff like that. So yeah, without further ado, uh, for the Grade 3s we're running 4 copies of Blaster Blade Exceed. Um, pretty much your main Vanguard of the deck of course still. Um, you still want to get his stride skill off um, when you're striding him. Counter Blast 1, uh, as long as it's a saver unit, of course. Counter Blast 1, uh, search your deck for a Blaster Blade unit added to hand, which is just really, really good. Uh, so flexible. It just gives you the chance to either search for another Stride Fodder being Exceed, or you can go search for the Grade 2 Blaster Blade, depending on what you need at the time. So, yeah. And uh, having the Counter Blast 1 retire a rear guard um, uh, with the Grade 1 or above, um, so it's really, really solid. Gives the deck a bit of control, um, especially against some uh, some clans because some clans have really good uh, rear guards. Uh, so having that ability is just very, very nice. So yeah. Uh, and then the backup grade three, of course, is the brand new uh, new style Blaster Lou. So this guy is nutty. Uh, <laughs> I love this guy so much. Um, so what he does is that when he's placed on Vanguard or rear. Uh, you choose a Blaster Blade unit from your drop zone and put it to the bottom of your deck. And if you do, he gets 5,000 power. Um, so automatically, that's really good because not only is he recycling your Blaster Blades now, but he's also getting 5k power as well. So he's a 16k column on his own. But to top it all off, he also has a continuous skill where if he's on a Rear Guard or the Guardian Circle, um, as long as you have an Alfred or a Blaster Vanguard, he gains Intercept and an additional 5k shield, which is just amazing because he has the powers of a grade 3 but also a grade 2 which is like it's it, it's perfect because uh what you can do is that you can call him use his skill and then you could just intercept them like freely because after you've used his ability you don't really need him on the field anymore so you can just free up that rear guard circle to call something like a blaster blade or a loo to help push uh, on your next turn which is just really really nice so yeah, those are the grade 3s, so uh, Exceed obviously is still your main vanguard, but Lou is just an amazing card overall. So, so happy that we got this eventually. So, moving into the grade 2s, we have of course 4 copies of our avatar, Blaster Blade. Um, don't need to explain why he's in the deck of course, but uh, I got a new artwork, I got the uh, the promo art from the manga, uh, looks really really cool. Um, shout out to my friend Jamie, you know who you are. Because uh, he gave me uh, one copy of this uh, about a year ago, I think, when I was playing uh, Blaster Thing Saver back then. Um, and I always had one, but I always wanted the playset. So, yeah, I eventually got around to picking up a playset, and it, it looks really, really cool. I, I do love that artwork. Um, and I've put the Legend Deck artwork into another deck, which I'll show you in the future. So, yeah, look forward to that. So, next, of course, we have uh, four copies of Lou, uh, Favoured People of Light and Dark Lou. Of course, you're going to run this. This guy is so nutty. Uh, the early game rush this guy provides is just crazy. Um, it's one of the reasons why I bumped it back up to four. Uh, and also just because of the fact that because you can recycle Blaster Blade now with, uh, with the Grade 3 Lou, this becomes more consistent in terms of having Blaster Blades available for you to call out with his skill. So I feel as though four is like a staple now. It's just really, really good. Um... So yeah, I don't really need to explain too much about Lou because he's just he's just amazing. The fact that he isn't GB is just insane. So yeah. Uh, then I'm running two copies of Trumpeter. Um, I still like this card on the deck because being able to call out any card from your deck for one counter blast is still very valuable. Uh, but she's a GB one, so do bear that in mind. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I only run two of her, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, it's still a very nice versatile skill to help search out any card you need. So a lot of the time, I'll search out either uh, Flogal if I want to go for the Flogal play. Or I'll search up Blaster Barkle to then do some unflipping with uh, Blaster Blade. So yeah, really, really nice card. And the last grade 2, of course, is uh, Blaster Blade Spirit. Uh, still like running this card in the deck because it's a very nice tank, a 10k base ride. Um, and it's also another Blaster Blade target for you to search out um, with Lou skill or Aerial Divine Knight Alt Mile skill. Especially Alt Mile because you can uh, call this from deck, give it 5. Uh, the passive skill would give everything 3 in the front row. So he's 18 on his own. 
And plus you'll have the chance to use his ability as well for one counter blast, which is very, very nice. Uh, and of course, with it being a blaster name, it'll trigger Wingo Brave skill off as well still. So that's really, really cool. So that is it for the grade 2s. So we'll go into the grade 1s. So just put those over here. So for the grade 1s, running 4 copies of Blaster Friend Barkle. Uh, yeah, he's like Blaster Blade. He is staple in this deck. He's got the Blaster name, so you can trigger Wingo Brave. He unflips with uh, Blaster Blade. And he triggers your uh, lose skill, the grade 2, uh, to hit 19k columns and use his skill as well, which is just crazy good. Um, so he's definitely a staple at 4. Uh, but then I'm running a, a bit of a controversial card, really. Um, I'm actually running four copies of Wingle Youth. Now, the reason I'm running him at four is uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first thing is that I love the early game thing you can do where if you ride your Barkle, you can put a Wingle in the rear and then have two um, attacks coming in where if they hit, um, you can have a possible search, which is just really, really nice. Uh, it makes the deck really consistent, I feel. Um, but the other reason is because uh, the fact that Wingle goes in the soul is very nice because... This helps feed your soul for cards like the new perfect guard, like Lien. Um, so if you don't know what Lien does, uh, it's basically just a standard perfect guard, but instead of discarding a card, you just soul blast one, which is just insane. Um, but there is something worth knowing about Lien, which is uh, it only works when your grade three Alfred or Blaster Vanguard is being attacked. So do remember that. Um, so in the in the early game, she's a bit uh, weak, but definitely in the late game when you're at the grade three stage she is just so powerful really really nice it just helps preserve your hand for a one card perfect card it's just really really nice um so i tried to focus the deck more on uh building the soul up and uh utilizing new cards like lien and also the merin perfect uh the g guardian sorry um yeah it's just really really nice and like i said i like the consistency wingle youth brings to the deck anywhere it's just all around a good card and it just helps with cards like lien so yeah, and uh, the final grade one is basically just two stride enablers, uh, just to keep the deck more consistent with striding. Um, it's nice to be able to call your grade threes to the rear guard sometimes, so having the extra stride fodder on the deck is definitely very useful. So yeah, uh, that's it for the grade ones, so we'll move into the grade zeros. Okay, so to start us off, we have Wingle Brave, our starter. So yeah, it's it's a staple. Um, it's the best starter for this deck. Um, being able to search out any blaster in your deck so so good it can get you out being grid stuck it can get you like blaster bar call in case you want more rear guard power um or the unflipping early you know it's you'll search out spirit with it for the 10k ride it's it's so good it's really really nice so i uh, yeah, definitely got to run the one copy of this uh and then for the triggers i am running uh four copies of the fogel critical um don't need to explain why it stands a blaster bird back up it's ridiculous um really really good and also it triggers loose skill off as well if it wasn't good enough already so there you go. Uh, I'm actually running uh, so eight criticals. Um, I'm running the four copies of Arangal, which is the new critical trigger from uh, GPT-11. Um, he's basically just a Margol clone. Uh, so you put him into soul, give something 3k. Um, so like I said before, it's basically because I'm trying to focus this deck more on soul generating and uh, using things like the Perfect Guard and the new uh, G Guardian for Merin. So... I feel as though it's more consistent overall because uh, just to show you the rest of the triggers, I'm running the four draw triggers of Margul, um and also the four, uh, the four lane. Um, doesn't really matter what your heal is in this build because I'm not running a uh, Mascal anymore in the G Guardians. But uh, the reason I decided over uh, Aran uh, for Arangal instead of the uh, the Altmile critical, which I have over here, um, this card's probably in hindsight this card's probably the better one of the two. Um, but the reason I liked the Arangal is because the Altmile crit, it sort of like it sort of feels like I'm forced to go into Altmile when I'm striding, which a lot of the time um, I don't want to. Like Altmile's a great card, don't get me wrong. You know, Errol Devine and Altmile is a really really good stride unit um, for Royal Paladins in general. But there's a lot of situations where I would like to put the uh, I would like to activate this effect to put it into Soul and you know draw and get the five k. But it's like I. D there are times where I just don't want to stride Altmile, and I just want to stride either like my second Gansler or my first or second um, Alfred stride. So, yeah, and also it's because Altmile's not a saver unit, so I can't trigger a uh, Blaster Blade exceeds um, stride skill. So with Arangal, um, I'm able to get the power gain still, which is still nice because if you put a Wingle Youth behind your Vanguard, that's seven on twenty six, which is thirty three. So the extra 3k will actually get it to a 36,000 attack, which is a very good number. Um, but also, I'm still feeding the soul 
um, for things like Merin or Lien. The only downside, obviously, um, is that I'm not getting the draw from the Otmal crit um, gives. So there is a downside, but at the same time, it's like, you know, when you're using things like Merin or Lien for a perfect guard or a G guard, it's like you're still, you could freely use the power gain of these cards now, like Margol and Arangal. You can use the power gain freely when you know that you're going to be using it anyway for another card effect. So it's really, really cool because this allows me to use their abilities now freely and not feel too bad about, you know, minusing myself because I know for a fact I'm going to be using that card anyway from the soul to use it, uh, to use a card effect. So, yeah, um, I think that's pretty cool. Um, you know, that's pretty much my logic with it anyway. But, you know, most likely people will still run the, uh, the alt mile crit because you do get the extra draw from him as well. But... I'm actually quite liking Arangal at the minute, just because he has uh, he's a bit more flexible for the fact that I don't need to force myself into alt mile all the time now in order to get the uh, trigger effect off. So yeah, so that is it for the grade zeros. So just move those to the side, and we'll go into the uh, the G zone. So first of all, for the G zone, we have three copies of Holy Divine Knight Ganslot Peace Saver. Let's get a let's get a close up on him, shall we? Because he looks cool as hell. Um, as a generation rare as well. But yeah, he is so good. I love this card so much. Um, so, okay. So why is this card good? Let me explain. So when you stride, in, uh, when you stride him, because he's a saver unit, you can activate a Blaster Blade Exceeds uh, skill to count Blast 1, get a Blaster Blade card. Alright, that's good. When he attacks, um, the cost is to counter charge 1. Okay. So you counter charge 1. Um, he gains drive plus one, so he's a quad drive. And if you have a face up card in the G zone, he goes critical. So he's two crit, four drive checks, and he's a saver unit. So you can search from Blaster Blade Exceeds Stride Skill, which is like, and you counter charge. So you're paying for that stride effect anyway by counter charging it back. What? <laughs> like, what? This is such a good card. Now, in hindsight, I I have un I I do understand in the long term that as good as he is, uh, and also just to finish his ability off, um, he has a continuous skill, which is whilst he's face up in the G zone, um, all your blaster blade units during your turn gain resist. So like any clans like Kagura or Gia Chronicle where they have a G guard that can affect your rear guards doesn't work because they have resist. Which is very useful because when you are going into players like Alfred, you really don't want your twin drive blaster blade getting spun back into the deck or retired or anything like that. So it's very, very nice. Um, but yeah, he's just uh, as, as good as the card Gansler is, he's very easy to stop with just a nullify. You know, nullify him, the problem's done. However, the thing I think people overlook sometimes is the quad drive capabilities with him is just insane. Because if you have a powerful regard column set up, you need to not only perfect guard against a lot, but you need to take into mind how powerful a regard column can get from the quad drive. Because it can get crazy sometimes. But yeah, um, he's definitely not a four of because I did pick up four of him. Um, the fourth one of him is over here. Uh, so I did pick up four of him, but yeah, you don't need the fourth one. Um, three is uh, plenty because um, you're going to go into the first one for your first stride anyway. And then the other two is basically just to abuse the critical effect, basically, and the quad drive. So I think three is the perfect number for him, because two didn't feel like enough. Like, for what he does, two didn't feel like enough, but three feels about right. So, yeah. So that's Gansalot. Uh, then we have the regulars of four copies of Alfred, of course, because Alfred is just your boy and gives your twin drive to your blaster blade. So, yeah, got to run him. Um, but yeah, the cool thing with Alfred is that I just like being able to, uh, in the late game... Uh, go for the five drive checks with the flow goal on the field because it's more threatening than Gansel. Because Gansel, yeah, four drive checks is good, but five is better. You know what I mean? So there you go. So that is it for uh, them. And then for the final G unit, we have four copies of uh, Alt Mile. Um, I'll be honest, I've actually been thinking about dropping him down to like two uh, just because I've been using him less and less, but. He's still such a valuable G unit um, in Royals, just to be able to call a grade 2 from your deck with 5k and giving your front row 3. It's still very good. Um, so I'm not too sure. Uh, tell me guys what you think about Alt Mile. Do you think I should still run it at 4? Or is there any other cards that you would suggest running instead? Uh, tell me what you think. But 
yeah, it's a very basic uh, G unit lineup. Um, I'll just move those across because I'll put the G guardians on the bottom. But yeah, um, very uh, basic G guard uh, G unit lineup. But uh, yeah, Ultmal is uh, as good as he is. I've been using him less and less. Um, but he is nice um in certain occasions. So that is it for the G units. So for the G guardians, uh, I'm actually running a new G guardian which I picked up recently. Um, uh, air elemental uh, Ractum, Ractum, something like that. I'm not too sure. Uh, but basically, um, when you guard with it, um, you can discard a card to draw a card, basically. So, the reason I put this in the deck is because um, I'm running draws, So, and, and also because of the quad drive as well. You'll have it times 10 plus cards in your hand, and this happens a lot in a lot of games. So, it'll, it's nice to be able to have a G guard where I can just ditch something um, that I don't need at the time to draw something that will potentially help me. Um, just in case I haven't seen that like combo piece that I'm looking for and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a nice G-Guard. Um, I'm still just testing it out with a minute because this is fairly new to me. Um, but it's uh, it's quite nice. But you can replace this with something like Mascal from the Fighters Collection. Um, or you can use uh, Dismal if you want to protect your rearguards more often. But I'm actually not too fussed lately if some of my rearguards get retired just because of the fact that it frees up that rearguard circle. And allows me to play something there instead. So, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one, but just running the one of it for now, just see how it uh, plays. Uh, then for the rest of G guards, I run uh, one lazy guard dragon just for the generic twenty k guard. Still very nice card to have in the deck. It uh, one of. Uh, then the one assault. Um, still love this card at one. Uh, just gets insane shield really really nicely. Uh, you could probably get away with running two of her maybe, but the fact that she requires you to have a reasonably decent board to be somewhat good. Um, I don't know. I, I just like running out of one. Uh, but what I do like is the new G-Guardian of Meren. So Meren, when you G-Guard with her, what she does is that you Soul Blast 1 to call a Grade 1 or higher unit from your deck and give it 5k shield. And then you guard with it in the Guardian Circle. So the thing I like about this lately is because um, it's a really easy 25k shield to get from a G-Guardian, uh, which only requires a Soul Blast, whereas... Uh, Mascal required you a lot of things. It required a GB1. Uh, it required a uh, GB1, flipping a G Guardian up, and also having a front row regard. So that's like three things you had to make for him. Whereas with this, the only thing you need is Soul Blast 1, and that's it. So it's a lot more flexible, I feel. Plus, you're using a card to guard with from your deck. And the cool thing about that is that, depending on where you're at in the game, you get to choose like what card it is. So it's like, alright, do I really need Trumpeter right now? Not really, I'm pretty good. So I don't really need Trumpeter, so I'll guard with it. Um, do I need Wingles right now? No, I don't. Alright, I'll just use one of those to guard with, you know? You've got quite a few useful cards in the deck, but it, the, there comes a time in the game where you just don't really need them, so you can just use Meren to guard with it, and it's all good. So, yeah, uh, she's a really, really nice card. Uh, I actually really underestimated her when I first saw her. I thought she wasn't that good, but lately she's been great. Like, I love running two of her. So, the only thing I can probably imagine myself replacing is this, probably. Um, but I don't know how much I'll use this. Um, I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but it's nice the fact that I'm going, like, you know, you got a generic 15k card here, a tw possible 20k here, dependable number here. <laughs> like, it does, it, it can just go up and down. Uh, and then a solid 25k shield here. So, it's a very nice, diverse G Guardian lineup, I feel, and uh, it's pretty solid overall. So yeah, uh, that is it for the G-Zone and uh, all the G-Guardians and the G-Units. So there you go guys, that was my update for Blaster Blade Exceed. So I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. Um, I'm really loving this deck lately. The new support is just amazing, I really do love it. Ganslot's just an amazing card, I just love him. Every time I stride into Ganslot, I just have a smile on my face. Like, you know, being able to quad dry is just such a good feeling now, it's really, really cool. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it for the profile guys. So tell me guys what you think about the deck in the comment section below um, I don't know when we're next going to receive support for this deck considering uh, the next set is going to be GBT 12 and I don't think there's any Royals in that set so Yeah, um, it's good for me though because that means I don't have to buy any more cards lately So yeah, I can actually start saving money up for myself now But yeah, uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys in the next video um, which is probably going to be my Alfred deck, which, uh, yeah, look forward to that. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.